So, I am a city bus driver. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, a few years ago, I was assigned to drive this one particular early morning bus route. Uh, I prefer to think of it as being sentenced to drive this route as I quickly discovered that this particular run serviced three different high schools. And uh, every morning, my bus would be jam-packed with testosterone-fueled, hormone-addled teenagers on their way to school. And this uh, uh, youthful exuberance uh, would greet me every day as these uh, teenage boys would come tromping up my steps and, and their energy is always just so, ah, and, and everything they say is hilarious and, and everything they say is loud and, and, and often inappropriate. And, uh, and, and I learned that teenage girls have very uh, intricate and complicated uh, social constructs. And, uh, and my God, I also learned just how uh, vicious teenage girls can be with each other and, and their so-called friends as, as I would be constantly bombarded with uh, these screeching snippets of their conversations. And, and even the kids that were quiet, the ones who just you know, kept to themselves, well, half of them are all uh, plugged into their iPods and their iPods are all cranked up to 11. So uh, try to imagine that the bass soundtrack that would play underneath this a uh, chaotic cacophony of noise that would be bouncing off the walls of my bus behind me is this symphonic slew of competing MP3 players as their earbuds would be bleeding out this hissing mixture of, of gangster rap and just really crappy boy band music. <laughs> and, uh, and oh, there was <clears throat> this one kid. And for the full four months that I drove this bus, um, and I never once saw his face, but at least once a week, he would, uh, somewhere in the back of the bus, take out his drumsticks and on the windows or the steel pole stanchions, he would uh, tickety tickety tack tack tack, tickety tickety tack tack tack. And, and every time I would uh, take a breath, embrace my, my inner Buddha nature, and I would very calmly get on the PA system. And, and I would say, uh, whoever is drumming, would you kindly stop again? Thank you. Uh, because I had to keep my cool. Because the second you uh, show any emotion or, or give them any indication that whatever you're doing is, uh, whatever they're doing is irritating you, uh, that is like uh, blood in the water. And, and, they will, and they will take your weakness and then they will turn it on you and begin to lean extra heavily on what is very clearly your last nerve. So, it is the last day of school right before the Christmas break. And, and it also happened to be the very last day that I had to be driving this particular route and no one was happier to be moving on to something else than me. And, and it was, you know, it was just, it was one of those days, you know, uh, the Christmas traffic was all snarled, everyone was rushing, and, and the weather that day was terrible, the, the rain was coming down in sheets, and, uh, and my windows were fogging up, because everyone on the bus insisted on uh, breathing, <laughs> and, and, and I got the fans blowing, and you know, I'm driving, and I'm doing one of these, and, and it's packed, I mean, these kids are just piled on top of each other, and they're piled on top of me, and all of that frenetic energy and exuberance is uh, like cranked up 50% because it's the holidays and everybody's excited, and, and also there's this, this like noxious teenage funk in the air, and, and, and I can only best describe it as being uh, a cross between a, a cherry lip balm and unwashed gym gear. And uh, the latter of which is coming from the knapsack that keeps bumping me in the arm uh, as I'm driving from the boy who's holding on to the pole and standing right next to me. And then this white panel van comes screaming down the road up the left-hand side of my bus and without any indication or, or signal, just pulls in front of me. I have to like, stand on the brakes. Everyone goes lurching forward. I give a couple of taps on the horn and panel van guy, in turn, uh, rolls down his window and gives me the finger. Now, 
I am a city bus driver. A day without someone giving me the finger is like a day without sunshine. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a professional. Um, I've been trained to deal with all this uh, stress. And of course, I remain calm, cool, and collected. Until, in that moment, like, like, like clockwork, I hear a tickety tickety tack 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 tickety tickety tack tack tack. Now, now I don't know why it was that moment I uh, snapped, uh, uh, but I did, and gloriously so. Uh, and believe me, it was this absolutely pure human knee-jerk reaction and response. Is like, you know, like I snap my head over my right shoulder and without even thinking, uh, uh, like a crazy person, I yell, uh, knock it off! Everyone, for the love of God, just knock it off! <sighs> and uh, the whole bus just goes quiet for a few beats. And I remember experiencing this very distinct moment of clarity. As, as I suddenly thought to myself, oh my God, I'm that guy. I'm grumpy old grampy. Because you know, like I thought, I mean, I actually believe that uh, I was still connected to my teenage self, you know, and, and like that I would always be down with the kids and I would never be the man. But uh, suddenly here I was, this uh, fist in the air waving, uh, you know, get off of my lawn guy. And, and I was harboring this, well, honestly, this quiet contempt for all of these kids. For what? For, for just being kids. And I just felt not good. So I pull it together and I carry on driving. About 10 minutes later, I arrive at the third and final high school. Now this is where the mass exodus occurs. All these kids go pouring out the front and back doors. And uh, I look at my rearview mirror and I see this one group of kids, there are five of them, gathering together at the back door. And they come walking up the sidewalk along the bus. Then they come back in through the front doors and they just stop there in the stairwell and face off with me. And I know exactly what's coming next. I mean, you could see it. I could see it, it was so obvious. These kids were feeling all indignant because the bus driver lost his mind for a second and, and yelled at them and now they were coming to lodge their complaint. So I just sit back in my seat and I'm thinking, bring it on. <laughs> this little Chinese girl, she reaches into her bag and she pulls out this white porcelain coffee mug with the Vancouver Technical Secondary School logo emblazoned on the front of it. And on the handle's a big red ribbon, and the mug's full of chocolates and candy canes, and she hands it to me and says, well, we just wanted to say thank you for driving us to school every day and for getting us here safely. Merry Christmas! <laughs> and then the boy standing behind her says, one, two, three. And then they all just bust out into a verse of jingle bells. <laughs> No, I know, right? I mean, I mean, it was as fantastic as it was just, just very confusing to me at that moment. <laughs> and when they finish singing, they, uh, they all say, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and they just bound down the steps and take off into the school. And I'm just sitting there, <laughs> slack-jawed. And, you know, I, like I, really, I really don't remember if I wished them Merry Christmas back or, or even if I thanked them, but they were gone. So I, uh, I closed my front doors. Psh! Sound effects part of my story. It's accurate, too. I, uh, I closed my front doors. Psh! But then, corner of my eye, I, I see the toll boy, uh, the one who initiated the singing. Well, he comes running back, and he stops on the sidewalk right outside the front doors, and he's looking at me through the glass panes. And before I could do anything, he just shoots his arms up in the air, and then very dramatically draws them behind his back, and out of each rear pocket, he whips out two drumsticks. <laughs> and for the first time in four months, I am eye to eye with my little drummer boy nemesis. And this kid just cocks up his eyebrow, and he's looking at me, big grin on his face, and he 
I tick it, tick it, tack, 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 tick it, tick it, tack, tack, tack. And then when he's done, he puts his sticks back in his pocket and he takes a step back and then he, uh, he shoots me the, uh, the double uh, heavy metal signs and he goes, Merry Christmas, Mr. Bus Driver Man! Woohoo! <laughs> and, and he just turns on his heel and he bolts off to join the rest of his friends. And still I'm just sitting there trying to reconcile what just happened, you know, where I was 10 minutes ago and where I was now, but my, my schedule, of course, you know, waits for no one, so I turn my bus back into traffic and carry on with my route. Now, at this point, I only have around eight or nine uh, coffee sipping, newspaper reading, calm, adults on board, and, and it's quiet. And the only thing I can hear is the whizzing of my tires as they cut through the wet asphalt and that droning kathump, kathump of the windshield wipers. And then this woman who was at the back of the bus, she comes walking up and she sits in the front seat right across from me and we drive in silence for a few minutes. But then she grabs onto the pole and, and she leans over to me and she says, uh, wow, that was, that was pretty cool, huh? And the only thing that I'm able to get out of my throat is, yep. <laughs> Thank you, and Merry Christmas. Joel Workinen.